Well, hello! It's time for another exciting episode of Pens in Use. This is the show where I talk about the fountain pens and inks that I've been using throughout the week. So, let's dive into it. If videos like this interest you, where I talk about fountain pens, both new and old, and at all price points, I would invite you to subscribe. And, uh, since I'm going to talk a little bit about knockoff pens and clones and so on in this video, uh, maybe you have some thoughts. Let us know down in the comments. So, let's dive into the pens. Alright, so these are the pens that I've been using throughout the week. From left to right, I have the Omas Ojiva Platinum 3776 Shoji Finish. I have a Sailor 1911S with a little bit of a story that goes with it and with this pen BBS. Uh, Parker Son, I should have put them side by side. Pa or I'll just put them side by side and to heck with the order that's written in my outline. Uh, Pen BBS 355, an Aurora Duo Cart, a Lamy 2000, Parker Sonnet, and a Schrade Tactical Fountain Pen. In fact, to make the story really work, we'll do this. Why don't you just reshoot the video or rewrite the outline? Ah, let's go with it. So, let's talk about the pens. As always, I'll be doing my writing sample in this upside down gun, <laughs> holding it like it's a Trump Bible. <laughs> uh, my uh, cognitive surplus notebook. So, I'm a few pages into it and uh, pretty happy with it. It's been a good replacement for my beloved BOMO art journal. And, uh,. I've been having this trend of very gloomy <laughs> weeks of ink. So uh, hopefully this week I'm going to jazz... Oh, there's some bright. Hopefully this week we'll jazz it up a little. So my first pen... Um, you, you know I always do the date with the first pen. So the ink isn't looking very hopeful. But it is in a very brightly colored pen. Uh, this is my Omas Ojiva. Of course the company Omas is no more. Um, I guess... Some of their parts of manufacture have been sold to other companies, but yeah, kind of sad. Uh, this was, uh, they had some very nice finishes at the time, you know, the famous Arco celluloid and all that. Uh, one thing I'm starting to notice is, you know, it's a demonstrator and it definitely traps ink in weird places more than some of my other demonstrators, but you know, the nib is one of these extra flexibile nibs. Uh, mine's a medium. I wanted a fine at the time, but I couldn't get one. So I'm pretty happy with it. So this is the Omas Ojiva. A medium. Extra flexibile. And the ink in it is a Roshizuku. Fuyu Shogun. Uh, which is a nice gray. It kind of matches the three or four inches of snow we got <laughs> yesterday. Because I'm actually filming this on Friday. Why? Well, it's been quite a week. So I'm filming it later at night than I usually do. I'm actually filming it on the Friday. Uh, so really, the pens I was using the, when I would normally film this, which is on the Sunday, uh, a lot of them are empty now, so I <laughs> uh, don't expect a lot of variety next week. So my next pen, that's a very nice shading gray, by the way. Uh, my next pen will have another dismal ink, and not in such a cheery pen, but it is an attractive pen. This is a... Uh, uh, Platinum 3776. This is my first one I ever owned. I have some pen pal letters, and right now uh, I need to address their envelopes, which I'll probably do after I get done with this. Well, after I edit the video, I guess. Um, and I'm using this pen to do that because of the ink that's in it. I do have a specific one of these pens uh, that will eventually serve that purpose, but... Uh, carbon black but uh, for now it's uh, on a two-year hiatus 
because I'm trying to find out does the slip and seal mechanism actually work for two years as they claim and uh, the two years don't run out I can't remember exactly when I just know it's in 2021 so it'll be interesting to see what happens then so when I'm talking slip and seal this is the pen I always grab to demonstrate it See, that inner cap supposedly helps it keep a good seal. I know, like, the Platinum Preppy has an amazing inner cap that does a great job. This one does well, too. Um, this one's just a little more complicated than the one on the Platinum Preppy. All right, my next pen was a bit of an adventure this week. I think it was yesterday, actually. Uh, so I filled it. If, if you don't know, this is a bulk filler, kind of like the COVID... Or not COVID, God, that's the virus. Kind of like the Conid bulk fillers. Um, and, and that's, you know, not a design that's unique to Conid. They existed long before Conid came along. Uh, but anyway, so I had filled it with uh, Cone Pecky, which will be in my next pen. And if you don't know, basically the piston here, there's a piston rod inside. Um, so you twist the piston rod into the piston and then you can you know it's like a draw filler you can fill it up with ink then you're supposed to unscrew the piston rod you can kind of see the threads for it there maybe there we go you can kind of see the threads for it and uh anyway then you can push it down and you know go on with your life and you know it's kind of like the um Pilot Custom 823, there we go, where, you know, there's a little bit of a seal down here, so you open it up. But anyway, so I filled it up with ink and pushed it down without thinking because I forgot to disengage it from the piston. So, of course, the piston went with it, and I shot Hiroshizuku Kanpeki all over the living room. So, I am so happy I have a laminate floor instead of, like, carpet or something. And I'm so happy it didn't hit anything important. Because, <laughs> wow, was that a mess. Because this is, what, two and a half milliliters of ink in this thing? That was a lot of compecky. So, uh, you know, I guess on a happy point, I've been trying to use up ink. And uh, I did use up a lot of compecky blue yesterday. But uh, not in the way I really want to use up my ink. So I, I've put in a Nema sign nib in this pen. Uh, this is a Nema sign, uh, I think it's a 0.6 millimeter nib. Oh, I can almost read it too. But it's a little too small. I'm, uh, that looks like 0.6 to me. You may recall that uh, at the beginning of the school year I had, uh, I destroyed a nib in this pen because it just poked down a little bit too far because when you look here, we are really at the very limits and I just bent the heck out of the nib that I had on it which was a beautiful um, Nema sign nib that was what that um, fire polished doggone fire polished finish anyway all right so this is a pen BBS I guess the mechanism has been modernized a bit and actually this pen's worthy of a small discussion um, Fig Boot did a discussion recently, I think all the pen reviewers have done it at some point, uh, about knockoff and clone pens and fakes. Um, he, he had better definitions than I did back whenever it was. I did my video on the topic, but it was just, uh, interesting to see his take on it. I won't say I agreed with everything or disagreed with everything, just, uh, interesting to hear his take. So the ink in this is Roar and Klinger, Alt Gold Grun. Uh, some people would say this is a coned bulk filler, and they look specifically at that filling mechanism, but that is not unique to Conid. That has been around, and actually Pen BBS has been interesting. They've been bringing back a lot of different filling mechanisms. I don't have most of them, but that's a thing they've been doing. I, I'm actually very impressed with their pens, just as a manufacturer to follow I uh, don't own a lot of them but I kind of follow what they do and occasionally get the urge to buy one 
And they've got a magnetic filler that looks kind of cool, but apparently very hard to get. So anyway, that's my uh, Pen BBS 355. And uh, good luck if you want a Conan bulk filler right now anyway. Because they're taking time off from taking new orders so that they can catch up with the orders they already have. Which, uh, you know, quite a gamble for a company to take. But I think a necessary one sometimes, because especially if you're getting behind. On the topic of knockoffs... It might be worth just taking a gander at these three pens again. Definitely some design similarities here. And I don't have the big daddy here, the, the Mont Blanc 149, cause, well, mostly because I don't own one. But I, I do find it interesting that some companies get in trouble for stealing more than other countries do. Uh, at one time it was Japan, right now it seems to be China. So this is a, uh, a Sailor 1911S. Uh, and actually, uh, Figboot brought up, it wasn't this pen, but it was another 1911. Um, when he was talking about it, and he did exactly what I did, only he actually has a uh, Mont Blanc 149 and uh, was showing the similarities and uh, pointing out that Shizuku, part of, to him, what made the difference is price. Uh, so I'll put a link to his video down below because, like I said, I, I found it an interesting discussion. He got into some facets I haven't seen in other people's videos, including my own, that I thought were worth uh, looking at. Made me... Want to go back and redo my own video. But I won't because he's, I don't want to knock off and, uh, you know, he's added to the discussion. I think that's valuable. And it is an interesting discussion because none of us want to see somebody stealing intellectual property and pen design is intellectual property. But at the same time, you know, sometimes you're doing an homage to, or you say, okay, I'm going to take this, but... I can do it better. So uh, it, it's a more complicated discussion. So that's why I'm glad he jumped into it and he added something to it. Uh, my next pen, whoops, let me cap it here. Uh, my next pen I brought up, uh, somebody commented on my review of this pen this week and mentioned how much they really like theirs. Uh, this is an Aurora Duo Cart. Uh, they mentioned that they have three of them. I only have one, but... Uh, Anyway, I do have two of the vintage Aurora 88s. So originally, the dual cart was uh, kind of the student pen version of that. And uh, this is the modern incarnation. And then there's been a sort of a revised version where they've... I guess there's some design faults with this that they've Aurora has fixed for their newest iteration. But whatever, I, I enjoy it. And I actually was able to get it with the vintage case. Oh, look, a bright ink. <laughs> so we're going to go with the Aurora Duo. Oops, A-U-R-O-R-A -A -A, Duo Cart. See, I can do bright inks. Um, I just kind of had to be reminded. So, Hiroshizuku. Yuyake. Yuyake. Yuyake sounds better. So, just a nice bright orange. And I, and I actually think that Alt Gold Groon may be uh, not very, not like the brightest color, but I think it's a fun color. So, that, the Kong Pecky, I think we've got three bright ones in a row here now. So, that whole dismal ink thing that I've been doing for the last few weeks, maybe that's over with. Uh, this next one will be a little dismal, but whatever. I think I talked last week about how I put, uh, didn't, did I talk about it? Yes, I did. I put Edelstein Onyx in it just for, uh, to start using it up, uh, and mainly to have it be a little different from the pen I'm using at work, which is the Pelican Stola 3. 
so I've been working pretty heavily on my novel, which is part of why I haven't gotten this filmed. Um, and one of the things I realized is, yeah, when you handwrite, it doesn't make, when I handwrite, it doesn't make it from uh, the notebook to the typed form. So that's what I'm working on now as I am just uh, typing and uh, forcing myself because, uh, you know, once it's on the computer, it's a lot easier to mark it up with a fountain pen and edit it and so on, but got to get it there. That does mean that I'm using up less black ink than I normally might, but I think that's okay because I've got several novels floating around in my brain and I gotta get uh, this one just down, finished, so I can work on another one. It may be published, but you know, <laughs> it's me, so I, I may just be happy writing it and putting it away. We'll see. This is a Parker Sonnet. Uh, I've had a Parker Sonnet in the selection. Did I have one last week? Yeah, I did. I had a uh, Parker Quink Red, which was loaned to me. This is uh, a different Parker Sonnet because I own two. This is one that I purchased in Fargo. Now, I had somebody point out... Let's see if I can find the date code here. This is a 1993 date code. And they pointed out that it didn't start till 1994. Um, and th they didn't think the design was quite right. So, I don't know, they got me wondering if maybe I've got a fake here. It's possible. But anyway, I, I enjoy the pen. So, this is a Parker Sonnet. With kind of an interesting nib on it. Because I'm going to go with Sonnet for now. Uh, this is a medium, what Parker calls a right oblique. Now, in the Parker world, right and left oblique are different than it is for most pen makers. You might be saying, wait, Parker does obliques? Yeah, they do. Um, you just don't see them at U.S. retailers. Parker is a more interesting company than people think. And uh, if you look at Europe, you'll see that uh, they're more interesting than people think um, because they're just more interesting in Europe than they are here. Uh, this ink is a Roshizuku. Momiji. And hey, it's another brightly colored ink. And this one, I was writing a pen pal letter with it. And was thinking to myself, wow, there's actually some sheen on this ink. Uh, of course, I write my pen pal letters mostly on Tomoe River paper. Unless I am between packs of the paper. And then I'll, I've got a big pack of Kokuyo paper that I usually switch to then. Uh, I actually have an upcoming video. I don't know a date on it yet. where we're, I'm going to talk with Pierre Gustafson about paper. And the Kokuyo is definitely going to make it onto the list. So I've been running through this ink very quickly because that's a wet puppy. And it has the benefit of not being as smelly as a real wet puppy. But not as cute either. Okay. Uh, and my Schrade Tactical Fountain Pen. I was going to uh, go over to Medicine Rock State Park this weekend and film a uh, my revisit to the pen and I was going to do kind of a themed po post apocalyptic uh, review but uh, with the snow and the location there and the fact that I drive a Toyota Camry I decided no <laughs> I'm not going to drive into the state park um, I, I've got visions of myself getting stuck there and walking for miles before I can find anybody to get me out um I, I just don't want to take that risk. So I'm, I'm kind of last minute rethinking my setting. Uh, I, you know, I've got my outfit. I've got my face all grizzled and everything. Uh, I've intentionally not shaved all week, you know, even during school. Uh, you know, I'm wearing a mask, so they, they don't really notice that you don't shave, which has been kind of a nice discovery about wearing masks. Um, but 
anyway, uh, yeah, I'm going to film that tomorrow somewhere. I may just drive out into the country where there's some, like, badlands or something and, you know, just stand in front of some dirt and do it there. I've got a, a really ratty old winter coat that I can wear so I can look like I've been surviving and, like I said, grizzled. I'm not going to do the uh, whole week in the summer of not showering or washing like I did the last time because, uh... I can't be away from people that long. And yeah, they don't notice I'm not shaving because I'm wearing the mask. But I think they would notice if I don't shower for a whole week at school. <laughs> so, I'm not going to commit that much to the role this time. But anyway, so look forward to that sometime before the election. It's not going to be political, don't worry. I, I don't get political in my reviews, except for snide comments on my uh, quotes. But, uh, you know, it'll be election related just like the last one was all right uh Schrade tactical fountain pen in the uh, original review i was i used the pointy end for step for, for pounding it into zombie brain stems since we're going to be post-apocalyptic this time i have to think up a different thing but i've got it worked out so uh this one does post but i don't post it so this is a Schrade. tactical fountain pen it actually has a decent nib on i want to say it's a the word just escaped my brain it starts with that schmidt um i don't know what size it is medium fine something like that uh the ink in it is Hiroshizuku. And I totally forgot what it's called. Yamaguri! Do my swatches get messier every time I do this? Anyway, um, you know that I've been trying to use up bottles of ink. I splashed my bottle of Kunpeki all over the living room. Um, but I sometimes shortly before I decided, you know, you got way too much ink, dude, and like seriously do something about it. I bought, uh, I had been buying these little Iroshizuku bottles because I really like their color selection. And I think they're decently well-behaved inks. And, uh, you know, the nice thing with these little bottles, they're not huge amounts cheaper, but they are huge amounts smaller than the big bottles. I, I don't want to grab a big bottle. I don't care enough. But anyway, but sit, looking at all those bottles in the drawer, of course, along with all the bottles of ink that I do own, I realize that, holy cow, somebody's gone a bit nuts. So, I'm, I'm on an ink buying hiatus. There were one or two that I was, you know, I said if they ever come back on the market, I will buy. Uh, one of them was, grab the right bottle here. Yeah, one of them was the Birmingham Pens Allegheny River Twilight, which you've seen for the last few weeks in my vintage Aurora 88. Uh, I may, I'm considering putting it into my modern Aurora 88 because I think the color matches very well. Uh, another one, even though I have a bottle, I wouldn't mind a bigger bottle. I haven't used the sink in a while, but I should. Uh, Cathedral of Learning Panther Blue. You know, with the way Birmingham Pens is shortening names, I'll probably, it'll probably be called Panther Blue or something, but still. I'm, uh... Other than that, I am I am on a ink buying hiatus because I've got too much ink, which I suppose is a uniquely fountain pen problem. So uh, anyway, I have uh, some first impressions. I'm going to be filming this over this weekend. Of course, that review. Uh, I've got a review of the Marshall pen, which the pen didn't make it to this week, but uh, that'll be showing up here soon. 
Uh, you may, uh, you're probably going to see the Charade Tactical Fountain Pen before that, because like I said, it because of how I always do that when it's kind of got an election theme going with it. So I got to get that one out before November 3rd. So uh, anyway, uh, and, and I've got pens here for, you know, forever to do reviews. I will also very soon, well, let's go back to camera A. So I talked a little bit about uh, Fig Boot during the video, or while I was recording the write, writing sample. Uh, like I said, he had an interesting uh, video on fakes versus clones versus uh, knockoffs. And, uh, you know, some interesting things to discuss there. Uh, I, I don't want to recycle what he said, because if you want to know what he said, go watch his video. I will put the link down there uh, in the video description. I will also try to put some uh, links to other people's videos on the topic. Uh, as I think of them, and uh, I don't know, maybe you have uh, some thoughts of your own you'd like to share. So like I said at the beginning, my call to action, if you'd like to share, please feel free to share in the comments. Um, I don't really have any earth-shattering topics for this week. I had kind of a lazy week. Well, okay, lazy once I got to my days off, but because, <laughs> uh, yeah, I got Thursday and Friday off from school this week. I, uh, kind of busy until then, but, uh, anyway, life should slow down after next week. Um, next week is parent-teacher conferences, and thanks to the pandemic, it's going to be an all-week thing instead of a all-one-night thing, so, yeah. Yay. <laughs> I'll be so glad when this damn pandemic gets over with. I'm sorry. I'm sick of it. Um, but anyway, on uh, the other topics, I just, uh, I, I brought up an inky disaster in this video. Um, I, I will say that's not the worst inky disaster I've ever had. True story. So uh, my worst inky disaster involved this. Not this specific bottle, but a bottle like it, and a uh, and Bay State Blue. I uh, was doing some cleaning, and you know, I don't know if I've ever shown real pictures of my living room, but you know, it's a small house. Furniture kind of does double, triple duty sometimes. So uh, until I don't know. Two years ago, it wasn't this spring, it was, must have been last spring, I haven't really had a desk to work at, so I always use these folding card table type things, or dinner trays, or whatever you call them, wooden table -y things anyway, kind of as my desk, and then I'd sit at the couch, and so I'd been filling up uh, Bay State Blue, because I used to have kind of a fetish for Bay State Blue, I, you know, it's still kind of a bright color, but I don't plan on buying any more once what I have runs out, and... Anyway, I had uh, put it in this bo a bottle like this because I emptied out my uh, Pilot Blue that came with my um, Pilot Custom 823, the original one that I destroyed with the disinfectant. And uh, so I'm, but I was uh, on the floor doing some cleaning and uh, knocked over that table. And, you know, just a cheap wooden folding table. Uh, I, that's what my computer and microphone are sitting on right over here out of sight because uh, if they sit on the desk you hear every thump and boom as I uh, move the pens around and stuff so uh, anyway I knocked it over and of course it couldn't just fall on the floor the bottle of Bay State Blue had to break and dropping from what would that be three feet high or so um, it didn't just break and make a puddle, it splashed uh, all up and down the wall. It was, it was awful. <laughs> so uh, I got, I uh, was able to s rescue my laminate floor using uh, kind of a lot of bleach. Because bleach actually does pretty well with uh, base State Blue. Not perfect, but it does. Uh, but my wall, there was no hope for it. So... If you notice the color that the wall is right now, guess what inspired me to paint my wall? <laughs> that accident. Um, I didn't want to have a big smurf spot all over the wall. So, uh, yeah, I painted it. It actually made the living room much nicer. 
Um, in fact, come to think of it, about the time I started this channel, I, I want to say my third or fourth video, you started to, I, I used to film it over there in the love seat. Uh, you, you started seeing paint swatches on the wall behind me. That was shortly after the accident happened, and that was me picking out different colors and trying to decide what color to make the living room. It may almost be time to repaint the living room. So, huh, I never thought of that before. But yeah, the paint job in here kind of dates from the beginning of me doing fountain pens on this channel. So, kind of wild. Um, but yeah, I don't really have any exciting topics. And we had another presidential debate, and since I ranted about the last one, I think I was not alone in ranting about that one. Uh, I did actually watch most of this one. Um, be honest, I was kind of expecting a train wreck, and I I wanted to see the awkward thing where... Sorry, special effects here. I wanted to see the awkward thing where Trump has... With the mute button. If you're wondering what I'm doing, I was muting myself, except then I didn't say any words, I just did gibberish. Uh, but anyway, I, I kind of was hoping to see a little bit of that, but you know, there were a few times you could tell that the mute button was being used, but uh, I think Mr. Trump realized that his first debate performance was really bad and didn't make him look good at all. Um, so it was closer to what I would like to see as a debate. Um, I don't know, is, is two minutes enough to discuss some of these topics? I don't know. Two, what was it, two minutes, and then they had uh, two minutes each, and then ten minutes to, or eight minutes? I forget the whole format. That doesn't matter. Uh, to discuss with each other. I, uh, I don't know. I, I guess... Uh, you know, it's network TV. They're more interested in ratings than they are actually the news. So, uh, but I think the, uh, forgot her name. Well, I don't, you probably can guess this. I don't have TV, uh, so I don't watch network news at all. So, you know, that's the first time I'd ever seen her or, uh, I guess I'd heard of Chris Wallace, but I'm thinking, you know, probably of his father, Mike Wallace, um, I, you know, grew up with the three channels you got with the rabbit ears, so I remember Mike Wallace on uh, 60 Minutes, but anyway, uh, yeah, I think she did a better job than uh, Chris Wallace did, but at the same time, I think both candidates were more conscious of how they appeared, so I'm a horse apiece, I guess, I, uh, but yeah, th there was actually more substantive exchange, uh, I do think... There was, it still wasn't really as much as I wanted. It was more, there was a lot of, well, I'm going to cram this thing about Ukraine or your son in here out of, out of nowhere. And yeah, I'm showing my bias a little, but you know, it was mostly on one side, although, you know, Biden snuck that kind of stuff in a few times as well. Um, but I guess I don't care because I voted several weeks ago, so... I honestly think unless something earth shattering would have come up in this debate or, you know, so, something earth shattering between now and November 3rd, I can't imagine being at this point in the election thinking, I just don't know which one I'm going to vote for. So, uh, and I don't know that there are that many people that are undecided anymore. So that was kind of a relief to see a little bit better debate, not what I would consider a good debate. But definitely a much better than that debacle that was the first one. So, uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so I'll, let's just leave it there. What the heck? I, uh, I've i been late filming this anyway because, uh, well, interesting week. We are on a mask mandate at school now, which actually I think is to the good. Uh, our... Uh, number of cases of the virus in the county has shot up. It was, uh, last time I checked, it was 31 cases in a county of 3,000 people. So we're on what the governor calls yellow. So, uh, I don't know that that means much in a practical sense for the county, 
but our school protocol was that if we go to yellow and we will follow the county, uh, that masks will be mandated for everybody unless social distancing is possible. So, uh, yeah. So the kids are wearing masks. And one of the great things that does for us is then with that whole uh, close contact thing, the way the way it works in this state is if both people are wearing masks, they're not considered a close contact. So that has made our life as a school a whole lot easier. So I'm totally in favor of it. You know, we've definitely, because of the area we're in, we do have people very opposed to that. But you know what? Sci it's the science. We're going with the science here. We're an institution of education, so I don't think we can just decide to ignore the science. So I'm glad that our school board stood up and said, let's do the right thing for our community. And hopefully soon we'll get out of the yellow, you know, as the cases go down, and hopefully they will. Um, it will mean changes to school, the sports attendance, you know, the games. I, uh, I know there are people unhappy about that, but again, we're trying to keep people safe. We are trying to have as normal a school experience for our kids as we can during a pandemic. Uh, because the alternative is, well, let's just shut her down, send them all home and go online again. And I don't think anybody wants that. So... I think we're making the right decision. So I'm going to leave it there. Um, I want to thank you for watching. <laughs> and if videos like this interest you, where I talk about fountain pens both new and old and at all price points, I would invite you to subscribe. And I guess I put two comments out there, uh, possible calls to action. You know, if you'd like to uh, uh, comp weigh in on the knockoff slash clone pen thing, I, I would sure love to hear your comments. Uh, or alternatively, uh, what's the worst inky disaster you've had? I talked about two of them, two of mine in this video. So I want to thank you for watching. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.